Hello, and thank you for tuning in to the Transplant Medicines educational video. This is the first step in learning about the medicines you will need after transplant. Throughout your transplant journey, you will meet with a transplant pharmacist to learn more about your medicines. One of your most important responsibilities after a transplant is taking your medications correctly, and this educational video will review all the information you need to do just that. Medicines after a transplant are necessary to keep you and your new organ alive and healthy. They are life-saving medicines and must be taken exactly as told to you by the transplant team. Taking your medicine the wrong way or not taking them at all could cause serious health problems, including rejection, infection, organ injury or failure, and death. It is important to learn about your medicines for many reasons. First, you need to know how to take them correctly. Your medicines will change often after transplant. And when these new instructions are told to you, you need to understand how to make these changes at home to continue taking your medicines correctly. And lastly, you need to be able to communicate your medicine schedule to other healthcare workers involved in your care either at office visits or being admitted to the hospital. Thank you for taking this first step in learning about your transplant medicines by watching this video. Learning about your medicines will take time and will continue over the course of your transplant journey. Your transplant medicines can be broken down into three groups. The first and most important group are your anti-rejection medicines also known as immunosuppression. These medicines help your body accept the transplanted organ. Without these medicines, your own body would harm your transplanted organ, which is called rejection. You will have to take at least one anti-rejection medicine for the rest of your life. The next group are your anti-infection medicines. The medicines we use to prevent rejection of your transplanted organ can also make it harder for your body to fight infection. After transplant, you are more likely to get sick from infections, so you should make sure to wash your hands often and stay away from people who are sick. We also need to use medicines to protect you from certain infections. These anti-infection medicines are only used short term while you are on the highest doses of your anti-rejection medicines. The last group are all other medicines you need to keep you healthy. All transplant patients will be given medicines to help control pain and prevent constipation. Everyone will also receive a medicine to help to prevent stomach upset, stomach ulcers, and heartburn. We may also need to start medicines to help control blood pressure or to start insulin to help control blood sugars, as these are common side effects of your transplant medicines. We will also review all the medicines you were taking before the transplant and continue those that are still needed. Transplant medicines are life-saving to patients who need them, but may be harmful to the people who do not. Certain transplant medicines are considered hazardous because they can increase the risk of cancer and birth defects. Healthcare workers and even caregivers must be careful when handling these medicines. Healthcare workers have a high risk of overall exposure throughout their entire career, and there are hospital regulations in place to protect them. You may see healthcare workers wearing protection like gloves masks, or gowns in the healthcare setting. Caregivers should also use caution when handling transplant medicines and limit handling when possible, especially if they are female of childbearing age or pregnant. Medicines should also be stored in a safe place out of reach of children and pets. All transplant patients will receive medicines to help control pain after their surgery. Pain cannot be avoided after a transplant, 
but we'll get better with time. When using medicines, your pain goal should be a level of pain that you can tolerate. You can try other ways to relieve pain, like hot or cold packs, breathing exercises, and stretches. Your main medicine for pain after a transplant is acetaminophen or Tylenol. This can also be abbreviated to APAP on medicine labels. This medicine is taken as needed for pain. Liver transplant patients cannot take more than 2,000 milligrams in 24 hours, and kidney and pancreas transplant patients cannot take more than 3,000 milligrams in 24 hours. The box of Tylenol may say 4,000, but we have purposely limited your maximum doses due to your transplant. Acetaminophen is very common in combination products, so always be aware of which products contain acetaminophen to make sure you are not taking too much. Too much acetaminophen can be dangerous for your liver. Acetaminophen is the only over-the-counter pain medicine you can take after transplant. You must avoid all the NSAID medicines. This class of medicines includes ibuprofen, which is Motrin and Advil, naproxen, which is Aleve or naproxen, or aspirin, greater than doses of 81 milligrams per day. You will also be given a small supply of opioids after the transplant to take as needed to help control the pain from the surgery. Common opioids you may receive are oxycodone or hydromorphone. These medicines can cause nausea, so it is best to take them with food. They can also cause dizziness, drowsiness, itching, and constipation. These medicines are addicting, so you want to use as little as possible. Only take the opioids for severe pain and always try Tylenol first. If you no longer need the opioid medication, you must discard them safely, which we will discuss at the end of the presentation. Stool softeners and laxatives like docusate and senna will also be provided to help prevent and treat the constipation from the opioids. Stop taking if you have frequent stools, loose stools, or diarrhea. A drug interaction is when one medicine affects how another medicine works. Transplant medicines can interact with lots of other medicines. These interactions may cause you harm if not addressed by the transplant team. It is very important to always call the transplant team before taking any new medicine, or if a healthcare worker not part of the transplant team wants to change your medicines in any way. This includes prescription medicines and over-the-counter medicines. After transplant, you will receive information about which over-the-counter medicines are safe to take. You can use this information as a guide when choosing over-the-counter products, but you can always call the transplant team if you are not sure. We do not recommend the use of any supplements post-transplant, as they can be a cause of harm to your new organ and can also interact with your transplant medicines. Some fruit can also affect your transplant medicines. Do not eat or drink grapefruit, pomegranate, pomelo, tangelo, mineola, Seville orange, or star fruit. Be careful to read labels of fruity drinks, sodas, and iced teas to make sure they are safe to drink. It is very important to adhere to your transplant medicine schedule. This means taking the medicines exactly as prescribed, the right medicine at the right dose at the right time. If you are 15 minutes early or late, this is okay, but taking your medicine hours after the right time can be a problem. You should never skip doses, miss doses on purpose, or stop your medicine on your own for any reason. Always refill your medicines on time to prevent running out of your supply. We suggest starting the refill process one week before you run out 
So there is time to handle any issues that may come up. Contact your transplant team if you are having trouble getting refills from the pharmacy, having insurance concerns, or are unable to pay for your medicine. There are many tools to help you stay adherent to your transplant medicines, such as medicine lists, pill boxes, and reminders, such as alarms. Medicine lists, pill boxes, and alarms are all great strategies to help prevent missing doses. Missing doses can be harmful to you and your new organ and increase your risk of rejection and infection. Missing doses on a frequent basis can cause organ injury or failure and death. If you miss a dose, we want you to follow our four hour missed dose rule. If you miss a dose, but remember within four hours of your scheduled time, take the dose. If more than four hours has passed from your scheduled time, skip the dose. Your next dose should be exactly as planned. Never double up a missed dose. If you are having trouble taking your medicines because you feel too ill or are vomiting, call your transplant team immediately. Medicine lists are a great way to stay organized. You will receive a medicine list when you are ready to leave the hospital. This list will include all the medicines you are taking, even medicines we may have continued from before transplant. Always follow your medicine list and update this list when medicines change so you always have an accurate copy. Never follow the pill bottle labels for instructions because they won't be updated when medicines change and can be inaccurate. You should have access to your medicine list at all times. You can carry a paper copy with you, take a picture with your phone, or use a medicine app. You must be able to communicate your medicine schedule to any healthcare worker during office visits or if you are being admitted to the hospital. This is an example of the medicine list you will follow after transplant. The first section includes all the names of the medicine, including the brand name and generic name. You should be familiar with both names as you may hear either name when talking to healthcare workers. The first section also includes the strength of the pills. The second section describes how to take each medicine with columns for different times per day and numbers indicating how many pills to take at that time. The last section includes the purpose of the medicine and any special notes. Let's go through an example together. Azathioprine, 50 milligram tablet, take two tablets at 9 a.m. to prevent rejection. I want to point out that Tacrolimus is on this list twice. That is because there are two different versions or strengths of Tacrolimus. The first line is Tacrolimus one milligram capsule, and the second line is Tacrolimus five milligram capsules. The patient's total tacrolimus dose is 8 milligrams at 9 a.m. and 8 milligrams at 9 p.m. Three of the 1 milligram capsules plus one of the 5 milligram capsule. The best way to make sure you always take your medicines correctly is to use a pill box. The pill box is large enough to include all of your medicines for the whole week. If you look at the picture, there are seven columns for seven days of the week and four rows for four separate times of day, morning, noon, evening, and bedtime. You may not take medicines all those times, but the pillbox has room. We think the best way to use your pillbox is to fill up your medicines for the whole week, then refill the pillbox when it is empty. You will also have to update your pillbox when medicine instructions change. It is very important that your pill box is correct, so pay close attention and limit distractions. Work together with your family or caregivers to make sure there are no mistakes. When you are done, go back and double check yourself to make sure you didn't make a mistake. 
Another good thing about the pill box is that you can take each day's medicines with you if you were going out. Each day of the pill box pops out to travel with you. That way, you don't miss any medicines if you are away from home. Storing the pill box is important so that the medicines don't get damaged. Try to store your pill box in a cool, dry place, not a bathroom or near a stove where it is hot or humid. Also, protect children or pets from getting into your pill box. Other than a pill box, there are a couple other ways to remember to take medicines. You can set an alarm on your phone or watch to remind you when it is time to take medicines. If you do this, you shouldn't turn off the alarm until you take the medicine. Also, if you have a smartphone, the team can help you find an app that can also help you remember. The app works just like an alarm, but can also remind a family member if you forget to stop the alarm. The app will store a list of all your medicines and the time you are supposed to take the medicines. Then, when you take the medicine and stop the alarm, the app will remember what time you took the medicine in case you have to look back. Sometimes you don't need medicines anymore. These medicines need to be disposed of safely to prevent them from being accidentally taken by another person who doesn't need them. You should never put medicines in the toilet or down the sink. If you want to get rid of the medicines yourself, you can mix the medicines up with something that would normally go in the trash and is undesirable. Examples of this include used coffee grounds. The hospital pharmacy also has drug take-back sites, which are special trash cans to get rid of medicines you don't need anymore. The pharmacy on the first floor of the Perlman building next to the cafe has a green trash can for getting rid of old medicines. The pharmacy can't take all things like needles, liquids, or aerosols. So read the directions before placing the medicine in the trash can. Thank you for listening to your transplant medicine introduction video. Now continue on with the individual medicine videos. Have a nice day.